Hi, and welcome to the Feet of Jesus, where we are going through the entire Bible, one book at a time. We are in Acts, but we are finishing Acts today. I feel like that is so cool, but it's also, oh my gosh, we've spent so much time in this amazing book. And if you consider that Luke is part one of Acts, and then Acts is part two, or the other way around if you want to do it, that Luke is part one of Luke and Acts is part two of Luke. I feel like this is a graduation. We are graduating for the time being from the New Testament, and I am excited to get to the Old Testament, but I love the things that I learned in studying for this week's lesson. And oh my goodness gracious, I think we're going to tie acts together with this beautiful bow and oh, just keep listening. So just a teeny tiny bit of ministry business. Remember next week, it's just going to be a preparation video on how to study for the Old Testament. Yay. So Old Testament, this is the book. The um, link will be in the description of this video. And so you can go there, you can push the button and it'll take you directly to this workbook. This time, you really do wanna get this workbook. We are going to study the book of Genesis and get into the Old Testament. The Old Testament, you study a little differently than you do the new. And we're going to study it in a systematic theology type of way. And so we're gonna pull the book away from us a little bit, learn main themes and how to do it. So next weekend, tune in because it's going to be how to study this book. You still have time to get this before next Saturday's video. And I really, really recommend you do that. So let's get into today's study. Oops, one more bit of news. Guys, please like us and please subscribe. If you have friends that you know are looking for Bible study at this point, this is a great way to do it. I am doing the book of Luke, which we started with a long time ago in my house, two days a week for people who want in-house studies. And I've loved it. And these groups are getting into it and they're really diving deep into scripture. Some people for the first time, other people for um, the 18 millionth time in their life, but it's really been so rewarding. So I really recommend if you want to get people into the house and you can order a couple of these books ahead of time. And anyway, it's a good idea. But if, not, if nothing else, subscribe to us and get on board. Okay, let's get into this amazing end to this amazing book. So this is the end of... The, Acts. And this is the end of what we know of biblically about Luke's, I mean, the end of Paul's ministry. Through history, we know a few things after this, but I'm going to give you just a little bit of a rundown of what we've learned through Luke and Acts. Are you ready? Okay. First, Paul was seen in the synagogues in Jerusalem. And then we have that he oversaw the death of Stephen. We don't really know if he was in charge or if he was just overseeing or if he was just witnessing. The people laid their cloaks at, at Paul's feet. Saul was how he was known at that point. Then we have the Damascus Road experience and him seeing Jesus and communicating with him. And then he went to Damascus. He went and healed and had help. Then he went to Arabia for three years and kind of learned what he was doing. Then he went back to Damascus and got out by um, with help from a basket because people were chasing him to kill him. Then he went to Jerusalem and shook things out, shook things up over there. And then he headed for Tarsus and then Barnabas took him to Antioch and Antioch became a hub of Paul's ministry. 
So Barnabas really helped him get his feet wet and understand what he was doing. And then from Antioch, Paul went on three missionary uh, missions, and we learned all about them when we studied Acts here. And then he went back to Jerusalem, and from Jerusalem, he was arrested, and he went to Rome, and then he went to heaven. And so that is our overview of all of Paul's mission and life. But now let's just get into Acts 28. So in verse 7, it says that Publius was the leading citizen of the island of Malta. What does that mean? It means that he was a Roman governor. He was in charge of that area. Now, some things that are kind of interesting, he invites Paul and all the people from the ship. Remember, that's over 200 people to stay with him in his palace, which must have been big, for three days. And he just listens to him and... and Paul, in the meantime, heals Publius' father by laying hands on him. One of the things that came out in this lesson is what does the laying on of hands do? One of many is I think it's, an, uh, it's a way of bringing truly symbolically as well as spiritually bringing God into the equation of healing. Because we know we do not heal. We do not do any of that in our own strength. That is only because of the grace of God, the, Jesus's blood, and through the power of the Holy Spirit. So God heals. He only uses us sometimes as the conduit to that. Isn't that a beautiful thing that we get to be honored with? And so Paul lays lays his hands on Publius's father, heals him, and all sorts of people at that point really want to learn about the ministry. Now, one of the things that is interesting is that Publius, there's many historians and philosophers that believe that a church sprung up on the island of Malta and Publius possibly was the pastor of that church. We do not know for sure. There isn't any documentation of that. There's just some hints at that. What a fun thing that we can find out someday when we get to go to heaven. But I think that's just such a beautiful thing of Paul's ministry that Publius may have really truly taken on to Paul's message about God. So then he gets to Rome. Rome is so very important. And I think in just a minute, we'll start learning more and more and more about why it's important. But Rome was the center of the commercial world at that point. And so getting the gospel to Rome was big. It meant that we here in Albuquerque, you all in Dallas and in Houston and in all the reaches of the world, you have the ministry today where you are because God brought the word of God through Paul to Rome. I just love that. That's how important it was that the theme of Acts is getting the gospel from Jerusalem to Rome. And here we are in Rome. It's so cool. So in verse 20, let's look at that for just a second. It says that for this reason, therefore, I have called you to see you and to speak to you because this is Paul talking, because for the hope of Israel, I am bound with this chain. So obviously you hear Paul mention chains quite a few times here. And we have to keep in mind that Paul here wrote Ephesians and Philippians and Colossians and Philemon here while he's in Rome. He was a very productive writer here. And he talks about chains a lot. So he must have actually been in chains. And who is the hope of Israel? You all know this. It's Jesus. So did you know that there are a lot of Jews today? So we get there and Paul is talking to a lot of Jewish people. And it says that some came to 
Christ and some didn't. Did you know that there are a lot of Jews today who's even given up the hope that there will be a coming savior? I don't know about you, but that's heartbreaking to me that Christ's people don't, didn't really hear him. Now, there are over the centuries, probably millions of Jews who have, and thank God, literally, thank God. But for those who didn't, that just breaks my heart. And for them to not even be expecting and hoping for a coming savior is horribly awful. So, but on the positive spin of things, let's look at this. And I really love it. We are going to get into some scriptures. So we're going to look all over the Bible. So if you don't have your Bible with you, go grab it. Pause me for a second and go grab your Bible because we're going to start looking at some things. So did you know that the soldiers were chained to Paul six hours a day? So one soldier would be chained to Paul and he'd have to sit there for six hours. And then another soldier would come and be chained with Paul for the next time, the next six hours, next shift. And so I have a question. Do you think Paul was chained to the soldiers or do you think the soldiers were chained to Paul? Think about it. In this lesson, it talks about how the Jews of Rome were coming and listening to Paul from morning until night. That means that those soldiers who were chained to Paul heard about Jesus from morning until night. They heard about Jesus their entire shift. And so we're going to do some looking around the Bible, and this is going to be kind of a fun thing. So let's look first at Colossians 4.2. So I have to find that. I actually have so many things we're going to look up this time that I did mark my book. Okay, Colossians 4.2 says, I'm going to go ahead from, well, no, from 2. Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Meanwhile, praying also for us that God would open to us a door for the word to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in chains. Here's that word again. So we know Paul was in chains, right? Yeah, we really, really, really know. And he was gracious for it, actually. I think he really was. I think Paul really understood what this was going to do for, for the ministry, Okay, now we're going to go to some super cool verses. First, we're going to go to Philippians 1, 12 through 14. This is going to be talking about the soldiers and kind of what was going on. Oops. Okay, Philippians. I told you I had it all marked, but they all came out. Okay. So, Philippians 1, 12 through 14. It says, But I want you to know, brethren... That the things which happened to me, this is Paul talking, what has happened to him? We know a lot has happened to him, right? We're finishing up the book of Acts. We have learned and studied and know what has happened to Paul. So the things that which have happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. So that it has become evident to the whole palace guard, his soldiers that are chained to him. And to all the rest, that my chains are in Christ, and most of the brethren in the Lord, having become confident by my chains, are more bold to speak the word without fear. Okay, now we're going to go to one uh, another verse, Philippians 4.22. So like just a couple pages after that. Okay, so, and all the saints greet you, but especially who are of Caesar's household. Who are Caesar's household? Those soldiers, those soldiers were getting the gospel because they were chained to Paul. So I ask you again, 
Was it Paul chained to the guards or were the guards chained to Paul? I think the guards were chained to Paul and God made that happen. He made it happen because through Paul and through those soldiers and through the Jews that, that believed, that was going to get the gospel to you, to me, and to all reaches of the world. Ooh, woo, woo, woo. So, all righty. So the longest period, this is the longest period of Paul's incarceration. And isn't it cool that the longest uh, period of Paul's incarceration was also the most prolific, the most productive. God knew. Paul's prison became his pulpit. Thank you, Jesus. You know, thank you for Paul's courage and his ability to just trust you without any worry. He, he trusted God. And we, I think we are here today because Paul trusted God. I love that. So I actually, when I was reading this and when I was getting ready for this, I will tell you, I got a little emotional. And so before we end this overview, I want to read 2 Timothy 4, 6 through 8. He wrote this um, just knowing, just knowing. And so I want to read that verse as we finish. 2 Timothy is known as Paul's very last book that he wrote. Well, it's a letter. We know of it as a book, but it was his last letter that we think he ever wrote. And 2 Timothy 4, 6 through 8, just tells us where Paul was at the end of his life. And I love it. So I'm going to end our overview, our last overview of Acts with these awesome words. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Mm. I can't think of a better way to end Acts 28 and the study of Paul's life. Mm. Awesome. Okay, let's get to our verses. I didn't show it, but this book, the last entries in this workbook, so the first one I'm going to get to, I will get to it, but I want to tell you to do something this week. You all have a little bit of a week off, and especially for those who have done Luke and Acts, I really want you to go back through your workbook, and I want you to go through your, pray, your prayers, okay? Here are my prayers. I want you to go through those prayers and I want you to highlight those things that God has moved in. Remember, it's all too easy to say those things that God, those prayers that God answered. But God answers every last one of our prayers. Sometimes he says yes. Sometimes he says no. And sometimes he says not yet. I have prayed over and over and over and over and over and over and over for Colin to be healed. And Colin, God has answered that prayer. He has answered in not yet. And one of these days he's gonna answer in yes. So I want you to highlight those things where God said yes and where God said where, where you felt God moving so it may even be that he said not yet or no to a prayer but then you felt there be movement 
where God had something different planned that was better. Highlight those things so that you can go back and see all your highlights to all your prayers. So that's the first thing I wanted to tell you. Let's read Acts 28, 6. They were waiting a long time and saw no misfortune come to him. They changed their minds and said that he was a God. So first of all, humans are fickle. This is Paul and he got bitten by a snake and he just flung the snake away. And so people at first were saying, oh, see, he's a prisoner, he's evil. And so God's gonna, you know, he, he may have escaped death on that ship that sank, but death still has him coming. So they sat there and watched him and he didn't die. So then they thought he was a God. So people are fickle, but he would, this is one of, this is the verse I'm going to spend the most time on. And then we're going to gloss over, you know, just a couple others, but he was on mission from God. Is there any doubt that Paul was on mission from God? No, no doubt whatsoever. Paul was on mission from God. Paul was told twice that he was by God, that he was going to get to Rome. So we know Paul was on mission from God. So therefore, he could not die before he got to Rome because he was on mission. So what does that mean for us? That means that if we are going to die when God says it's time for us to die, we are going to go to heaven when our mission is finished. And boy, howdy. Does that speak volumes to me? Because in this day of COVID, and I've said this over and over, so I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, but God is either sovereign or he's not. God is in control of when I go to heaven. God is in control of when you go to heaven. He knows. He knows. So don't fear COVID. Do what you need to do, but don't fear it. Don't fear the things that we typically fear because God is sovereign. Okay. So, next verse. One of the things I mentioned to, for myself on my own writing for Acts 28.6 was that Paul had confidence in God, but he also trusted God. And I know that those words very often are synonymous, but for my ears, it means a little different. Sometimes I can have confidence knowing that this is going to happen knowing that God is either sovereign or is not. But sometimes I still worry about things. And I'm really working on myself and on my own heart to not only have confidence in the word, but to trust God in what he says. And so I don't know about you. Maybe that's the question of the day. Do you have confidence? You, first of all, do you believe that confidence and trust are the same word? Do they have the same meaning for you? Or are they a little different to you like they are to me? And if so, do you feel like you are like me and still working on confidence and trust in that whole thing? I'd love to hear your answers on that one. So the next one we are going to talk about is Acts 28, 15. And the brothers there, when they heard about us, came as far as the Forum of Appius and Three Taverns to meet us on seeing them, Paul thanked God and took courage. So what does that mean? If he took courage, that mean Paul, means Paul, a guy that I think I, and I think a lot of Christians hold in giant esteem as a human being, was discouraged. What does that mean for you and I? That means that it's okay for us to get discouraged from time to time. Don't, don't beat yourself up for being discouraged. I get discouraged. I'm sure everybody does. Don't beat yourself up about it. But when we are discouraged, we need to look for the people and scenarios that God, through his providence, has put in our path to help encourage us, just like he put those people in Paul's life to encourage him. I have absolutely no doubt that God knew what was going on with Paul, and he put those people in Paul's path to encourage him. So the last thing we're going to do is very simple. I could not help but read the very last verses of Acts. So here we are. He lived, he lived there for two whole years at his own expense and welcomed all who came to him, proclaiming the kingdom of God 
and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. You know, what I put here was simple. It doesn't really feel like the end. You look, you, if you look at any of the other 13 letters that Paul wrote, they all kind of come to an end and you really, everything's kind of tied up and you know that it's the end. This doesn't sound very end-ish. Teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. It just seems like there's a dot, 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 doesn't it? I think there's a reason for that. You know what? Super cool. I think perhaps, perhaps that that is on purpose. And we are still in the book of Acts. And you and I and all our brothers and sisters in Christ all around the world are still writing the book of Acts. Praise God. Awesome. You and I get to be a part of this amazing experience that our Father God has put together since the book of Genesis through everything that Paul experienced and we are still experiencing. I love it. So what do we put at the feet of Jesus today? Oh boy. What should we put there? Sometimes it just comes to me very quickly. I think, let's put 2 Timothy, that verse, let's put it again at the feet of Jesus. And let's realize that this is what we want to say at the end of our life. So, friends, I love you. I really do. And I'm so excited to start the book of Genesis with you and to get into the word in the Old Testament and learn how to study the Old Testament in a different way than we've studied the new. I'm so excited. Listen next weekend to the how to study the Old Testament video that I'm going to put together and get the book and put all your worries at the feet of Jesus with me. So I'm going to finish off the book of Acts by reading 2 Timothy one more time and we're going to end the study of Paul's life and how God the Father brought the word all the way from Jerusalem to Rome and to the ends of the earth, including you and I. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid out for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Someday, folks, we are all going to get that crown of righteousness. So we do not know when the end is. So study the word, know the word, proclaim the word, just like Paul. Remember, we are still in the book of Acts. So go be a part of Acts today. Friends, I love you. Stay tuned. Two weeks from today, we are going to recap our first lesson in Genesis. One week from today, I'm going to show you how to do that. I love you, friends. God's got this.